Late last year, stories started popping around like a ping pong ball in the lottery number machine that is also known as America's conservative media. The particular ping pong ball in question was labeled, President Obama plans to close the U.S. Embassy at the Vatican. Oh, the outrage! The conservative Washington Times newspaper was on it. Obama's call to close Vatican Embassy is slap in the face to Roman Catholics. The mostly just wacky conservative website WorldNet Daily accused President Obama of insulting Catholics with this embassy shutdown. The story made it all the way from the fringe to what is supposed to be the center of the Republican mainstream when Jeb Bush decided to join in the frenzy, tweeting, quote, hopefully it is not retribution for Catholic organizations opposing Obamacare. Of course, like all ping pong balls, this story was mostly air and easily destroyed under the weight of even minute further inspection. President Obama was not trying to close the embassy to the Vatican. He was trying to move it closer to the Vatican, to the same compound that houses our much larger embassy to Italy. And whether or not Jeb Bush was aware of this fact, the embassy consolidation plan for the Vatican was an idea that was first introduced by the Bush administration. In 2008, the State Department says the move would not only improve security, it would also save us more than a million dollars a year. And in part, because the new location would be a bit closer to the actual Vatican than the old embassy, the Vatican liked the idea too. But when you put something apolitical, bipartisan, non-controversial, and fiscally conservative like that into the conservative media machine, it naturally comes out as satanic volcano sacrifice to the atheistic idols of communism or whatever. It was, it, the story was a fantasy from the start. It was easily debunked with about 20 seconds of Googling as long as you were willing to read Google search results from outside the conservative media. It was a completely made up fake scandal and now it's in the budget. What? Republicans have put their collectively ill-informed foot down now, and they have banned the embassy move from happening. Seriously. Tucked into the massive $1.1 trillion spending bill is a provision that bans anything from happening to the Vatican embassy. It stays as is. You wanna know what else the new spending bill bans? It bans the anti-poverty activist group, ACORN. The new budget includes four separate provisions blocking any funding to ACORN. If you're keeping score at home, ACORN has not existed for four years now. But it will not get any federal funding. Suffice to say, the new spending bill includes a lot of nonsense generated from the comment section of conspiratorial YouTube clips about Kenya. But there is one very consequential and controversial bit of business that did make it into the 1,582-page spending bill. And the Washington Post had an exclusive on it today. According to the Post, sneaked into a classified annex of this giant bill is a secret provision that would block President Obama's plan to shift control of the drone program, to shift control of the U.S. armed unmanned drone program from the CIA to the Pentagon. In his big historic speech last spring on the war on terror, President Obama openly talked about the drone program for the first time. And one of the new operating principles he announced in that big landmark speech was to start to shift control of the drone program from the super secret, literally covert CIA to the Defense Department, which can be quite secretive, but which has an arguably more straightforward route to congressional and therefore public oversight. It sounds like a technical thing, but that would be a really important shift. I kind of wrote a whole book about how important that kind of shift would be. But that planned shift announced by the president last year is reportedly not happening. The secret measure in the federal budget plan restricts the use of any funding to transfer drones or the authority to carry out drone strikes from the CIA to the Pentagon. That's according to officials who spoke on condition of anonymity because nobody is authorized to publicly comment on this legislation because it's in the classified part of the bill. Who included the measure? While these secret anonymous officials say it most likely came from members of the House and Senate Appropriations Committees, but we don't know for sure because nobody is officially talking about it. White House, no comment. CIA, no comment. Pentagon, no comment. So it is very unclear how this is all going to play out, but this is an important issue. And even with this unresolved and undebated, the bill cleared the House last night, and just a few hours ago tonight, it also cleared the Senate, 72 to 26. And so the bill now goes to the president's desk for his sign-off, including that provision that will keep our lethal drone program as opaque as possible, both to us and to Congress that is supposed to oversee it. At least that's the status for now. Watch this space.